Hello, this is Robert, and in this video, I would like to discuss opening a file and reading data from a file. So, in this program, I have set up a loop that will continue to ask the user to enter a file name until the file opens or until they type cancel. So, at the beginning of the program, I'm asking the user what file they would like to open, and then I take input on file name, which is a string right here, and then I attempt to open the file that they specified. Okay, if the file doesn't open, so while not in file dot is open, notice that I'm using a while loop right here instead of an if statement, so now the user can have as many opportunities as they want to specify the file name. If the file doesn't open, it enters this loop and it says, sorry, the file did not open. Try again or type cancel to quit. And then I ask for the file name again right there. If the file name is equal to cancel, then I, then I state that we're canceling. And then, and then we have this break statement right there. Well, remember that a break statement will terminate a loop right at that statement. So when we hit, or if we hit the break statement, execution will jump down to the following statement, the statement that's, that's directly after the while loop structure. Okay, let's go ahead and test this code. So, I'm going to specify a file name that doesn't exist, something like sumfile.txt, and it says, sorry, the file did not open. Well, that makes sense because I didn't create that file. So now I'll try some other file.txt, and that file didn't exist either. So I'll go ahead and give it the actual name of the the file that I set up and that was scores.txt. So it opened up the file and, and it read the data from the file and then the program is done. Let's go ahead and run it again but this time I'll type cancel. Um, so I'll type some file.txt and then I'll try, uh, type cancel right here and then it will tell us that it's canceling and the program is all done. Okay, um, that's how that while loop works right there. Um, let's take a look at this if structure right here. So this is what is testing this this um, this if conditional right there. It, it, that is testing to find out if they wanted to cancel. And then if, if they did type cancel, then we let them know we're canceling and we hit the break statement. Otherwise, if they don't type cancel, then that means that they're trying to open up a different file. So we have this else block or else clause right here. And then we try to open up the in file. Uh, we try to open up the file name that they specified one more time. Okay, the code following th that particular while loop that keeps asking for a file name until they want to quit, this particular if structure right here will only be executed if the in file is open. So if it didn't open, which means that they typed cancel, then this will be false and we'll skip to the bottom of the program. So if the file is not open, we jump down to the system pause line. But if, they, but if they did successfully open up a file, then the file is open, and so this code will be executed, that code right in there. It specifies what the scores are, and they are as follows. And then it enters a while loop, and we're asking while not in file.eof. So while we haven't seen the end of file marker, continue to loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to use extraction 
to read the name and the score for each person from InFile right there. Let's take a look at the text at the uh, scores.txt file. We have Alice who got 95, Ben who got 85, and Terry who got 75. So there are three people with three scores in the scores.txt file. Notice that we have white space in between the name and the score, and the name is only one word long, so that's why we can use ext extraction. So we are extracting the name first, which is one word, and then the score, which is one number. So that's why we have name as a string and score as an int. Okay, we're going to go around this loop until we reach the end of file marker. Um, you may have noticed that there are three people in the scores.txt file, but let's see what we get when we run the program. So scores.txt, for some reason, we got Terry output twice. So Terry scored a 75, and it set it twice. The reason why it's doing that is because there is a new line at the end of this file. So we have Terry, 75, and then we have new line. What's happening is that we are reading each line from the file but extraction stops at white space and so after we read the score the last score 75 there's a new line character right after it so um, the we haven't seen the end of file marker yet and so we reach the bottom of the loop and then we go back up and check this particular condition and it happens to be true. We haven't seen the end of file marker. So then we're going to try to read name again from in file, but there's no more data after the new line. So what happens is if it can't read a new name from in file or a new score, it just uses the previous value. The last time around the loop, we read Terry for name and 75 for score. So it just reuses that, that uh, data. It's kind of like um, input failure. We failed to read any new data from in file, so it just used the previous data that it, that it had read. All right, the easiest way to fix this problem is to just get rid of the new line. And so if I save that, now if we run the program again, it should output Terry just once. And it does. The problem though is that with the Linux operating system there is a standard called POSIX, P-O-S-I-X. And that standard says that every line of text has a new line at the end of it. So there's a new line after Alice's score there's a new line after Ben's score, but there's no new line after Terry's score, which means that technically this is not a line because it's not terminated with a new line character. So on Linux, if you're using Vim or VI or Emacs or any other text editor, it's always going to place a new line at the end of, of the last line like this. So we should get used to having to deal with the new line at the end of the file. Oops, I just wanted to save scores. So save scores. Okay, so now I put the new line back and so what we have to do is we have to deal with that new line at the at the end of the file and so what we can do is we can reorganize our while loop so that it will read the data at the bottom of the while loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this statement down to the bottom of the loop. There's only one other statement, so I'm just moving it um, after. Oops. 
So I'm just going to move this file, I'm sorry, that statement to the end of the while loop so that it, it, it reads from the file. It does extraction from the file as the last line in the while loop right there. So here's the end of the while loop and here's the extraction which is at, at the bottom of the while loop. Okay, we have a problem with this though because we're not reading the data from the file until after we try to output the data at least once. Name is initialized as, as the empty string right there, just two double quotes means the empty string. And score was initialized as zero. So the first time we enter this loop, it's going to output a blank for name or nothing for name. And it's going to output a zero for score. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So what we have to do in this arrangement is we have to do extraction twice, once above the loop and once at the bottom of the loop. So I'm going to copy that statement and I'm going to place it right there. So now we're reading from the file above the loop, then we enter the loop and the first thing we do is we output the data that we just read and then we read additional data from the file right there. Okay, so I'm going to run this one more time. And we should see the output for Terry and their score uh, just once. Okay, so scores.txt. And there we see Terry and their output just once. Okay, thanks.